Poor Barbara, not for her the carefree hours of happy play. Nor the busy hours of work and study. What has happened to her that she lies there so hot and feverish, so weak and dizzy, so miserable with suffering and pain? A communicable disease is one which can be caught from someone else. This means that the germs have to leave the body of a sick person and enter the body of one who is well. The usual gateway by which they enter is through the mouth or nose. How do germs make the trip from sick to well and thereby spread disease? They may travel by one of several ways. Coughs and sneezes which are not protected send germs in a direct spray. This invading army is so tiny that it can be seen only through a microscope. Its soldiers are the germs of communicable disease. Some of these disease-causing organisms are so small that they cannot be seen even with the most powerful microscope. Scientists think that most colds are caused by extremely small microorganisms called viruses. Viruses, and there are many different kinds of them, can be scattered with each particle of saliva and mucus. When one sneezes or coughs, for instance, but do not think for a moment that cold-producing viruses are spread only by sneezing and coughing. If by some magic, the tiny particles of saliva and mucus could be made visible as a black smudge, we quickly would realize in how many other ways we are apt to scatter bacteria and viruses all around us. For instance, <coughs> Jane here has a cold. Look at that smudge. Look at those germs she leaves on the doorknob. And here's Bob's hand picking them up. Bob, his hand now covered with germs picked up from that doorknob, transfers them to a book. Sue, having the bad habit of wetting her finger to turn pages, carries the germs from the book to her mouth and then passes them along with a pencil to Anne. Anne carries them home and leaves them on the family's dinner table. Yes, even during an ordinary conversation, saliva and mucus particles escape our mouth and easily reach others who inhale them as they breathe. Just remember how breath becomes visible on a cold day. You see, what you think is a simple cold could really be the first symptoms of some other disease, such as measles, infantile paralysis, diphtheria, whooping cough, scarlet fever, influenza, and others. Go to bed at a reasonable hour. While you grow, you need about 10 hours of sleep each night. Sleep recharges the body's energies. Protect yourself against infection. Keep pencils and other things out of your mouth. Never take bites of other people's food. Do not use somebody else's drinking straw or glass, not even within your own family. In the bathroom, for instance, use only your glass. And wash your hands frequently and thoroughly, especially before eating. When you wash your hands, you wash away many of the disease-carrying smudges you may have picked up. But if in spite of all these precautions, you still come down with a cold. Let us repeat, take it to bed and stay there until it has run its course. This is the safest way to regain your health and to return as quickly as possible to work, to fun, and to play.